Hello, welcome to another Movie Picks tutorial. I'm your host, Steve Grizzetti, co founder of MoviePicks.com. Today we're going to look at a very special product and we're going to look at it in a three part series. This is part one. We're calling it Basic Training with DVD Architect Studio. Now, DVD Architect Studio is the consumer version of DVD Architect. There's also a professional version um, that comes bundled with Sony Vegas. Uh, it's a lot deeper, but believe it or not, the interfaces are very, very similar. And if you can use one, you can probably very easily use the other. So this would apply also then to the professional version. But we're going to look at just some of the basics, the basic training, the basics of how to create a DVD or how to author the menus of your DVD in DVD Architect Studio. I want to show you quickly the main panels that you want to get to know. And that is, first we have our big workspace panel. That's the panel in the middle of the screen. This is where we're going to build our menus and get an idea of what our DVD menus are going to look like. Uh, to the right of that is, are the, is the properties panel, and I call it actually are the properties panels, because there are a number of panels there depending on what you have selected. Right now I have a menu page up in my workspace area, so that's what I have is menu page properties. If I were to select the text box here, now we're getting the properties for the text box. If I were to select a button or media in this workspace area, then uh, the properties panel would show then the properties for those. And we'll see that as we go along here. To the left of this workspace, we're going to find what we call the project overview menu. And if you've ever worked on a, on a website or if you've ever even browsed your computer, you'll recognize the structure of this. This is the structure of your DVD spread out like a tree. Now, this, you can build a pretty complicated DVD menu in DVD Architect. You can build many, many levels, many, many menus that talk to each other, lots and lots of media. So this little map here, as we build our menu, this map is going to build, and it's going to help you find your way around your DVD. Below that is an area where we have a couple of things. We have our Explorer. This is where we're going to draw our media from. Uh, it's also got themes, backgrounds, and buttons, which we'll explore more in in our second lesson here in our basic training. And then to the right, lower right, is our timeline. And the timeline is what we use to play back the media. Or if you have an animated background for your menu page, or if you have an animated button, you can preview it or set it up or customize it or even trim it right there in the timeline area. So those are the basic workspaces there. There's a lot more. It goes a lot deeper than that. But if you can master these, you'll be about 90% of the way there. So let's build a basic menu page. And it's as simple as going to the Explorer. And you can do this also. You can drag directly from Windows Explorer and locate our media. And here I've got some clips. These are DVD quality MPEGs I've exported from my DVD or from my video editing program. I like to use them because they're virtually finished. When I add them to my DVD, my DVD uh, in DVD Architect, they're not going to have to be recompressed. They're not going to have to have more work done to them. They're virtually done, and the program will be able to work much more effect effectively and efficiently with them. And when it comes time to output, it's going to happen relatively quickly because you won't need to recompress. But you can use AVIs. You can use MOVs. You can use a variety of media to create uh, your DVD with. So I'm just going to drag main video up here. And as I drag it to the menu, you see that it creates a button. Simultaneous to it creating a button, if you look over here in the Project Overview window, you can see that from the menu has been a link created to Main Video the Video. So this button is functional at this point. I've created a button just like that. And if I were to click on it, in fact, even if I, in my preview area, and we'll just click on preview here, you see that there's my button. And when I click on it, it brings up my video. Okay. So that's how simple it is to add a button to your menu. Now, once it's up here, you can do a variety of things to customize your button. And you can uh, click over here on the sizing tool, and you can size your button. You can size your button and its thumbnail as one piece. You can size the thumbnail separately. You can size the text separately. And in addition, you know, right now I'm looking at it, and there's nothing on the thumbnail itself. I can customize that look also. You see that as I have my button selected, that my properties panel shows button properties. And the reason I'm not seeing anything in my thumbnail right now is because this is the very beginning of my video and there's only black at the beginning of my video. So I want to 
set my thumbnail for someplace deeper in the video. The way I can do that is I just go here to the media page on my button properties. And there you can see thumbnail properties. Uh, my start time, this does not affect the start time of the playback of the media itself. By the way, this only is for my thumbnail. I can scroll this ahead and pick a spot right there. That's a good spot. And there is my, now my thumbnail for my button. Just by scrolling to a, a spot here in the media. I, right now it's set up as a still, by the way. From this drop down menu, I could set animated and I could create it as a live loop so that you would have an animation going there in my button also. Uh, create additional buttons, just as simple as dragging them up there. Same things apply, I can resize them. Um, I can uh, change the thumbnail on them, whatever I want to do. They are there. Get back to my, uh, my selection or my move tool and I can position them wherever I want on my menu. As you see, as I add them, if you look over in the Project Overview menu, you see my tree is building. I can also add a sub-menu to my menu, and I do that by clicking on my menu page and then clicking this plus button here. You can see you add a lot of things here. You can add a picture compilation, which is sort of a slideshow, a music video compilation, media. These are a lot of things that are a little more advanced the media you add, of course, would create a button, but we're going to create a submenu just by selecting menu here. And you see added to the tree is a submenu, and you see added to my menu in the workspace here is a button. Now this button by nature is going to have a, a thumbnail attached to it. I don't particularly see a point in having a thumbnail, so I want to show you how to customize your button. Your buttons can be, again, they can be either a thumbnail, they can be text, or they can be a combination of both as these thumbnails are. By right clicking on them I can choose the properties here for button style and you can see I can choose to have button style that is text and image, image only or text and I want text only in this case and now my link to my sub menu is text only. When I select any block that includes text including a thumbnail you notice that at the bottom of my workspace window there's information here or properties for the font and for the text. So I'm just going to choose here my title which says menu one, not a very exciting title for my menu page. When I choose that I can uh, then go down here and select and apply any kind of font that I want. I can make a bold, I can make it italic, I can have a drop shadow under it. Right now the font is set to automatic which means that if I were to resize that block by choosing the resize tool as I stretch it the text gets bigger or smaller depending on the size of the block. More often than not though you're going to want to control the size of your font and you can do that just by switching this from auto to whatever size font you want. And you can see that in addition you can justify it left or right, up, down, top, bottom. And with this button here you can select colors for it just by browsing here on the color palette and choosing whatever color you want for your font. Now finally we've got some here that says menu one. We want to edit it. I just choose the edit block or the thumbnail or the button <coughs> and I click edit text and now it's editable text and I can change that to my video for instance. And the same thing I can do it with the thumbnails here. Right now it says main video. If I click edit text it can be our yearly video for instance. And you can see what happened because it was automatic. It actually shrunk to fit the space. I can again, you know, change that from automatic to whatever size font I want. So here we've got our basic menu here. And here we've got menu two. Why don't I change this to sub menu? Because this is our link to our sub menu page. And if I double click on it, you see I jump to the menu, the sub menu page. I could also have gone over here to the project overview window just by double clicking on it. it. Takes me to the menu page. And I can build my links on this page also. So this could be my special feature page, right? I've got my main video page here that I can maybe uh, have some of my main videos on. I can call the sub menu area, I can actually call it extras, right? And if somebody clicks on that, then here I can add some special videos like some of my older videos, some outtakes, whatever I want to include, special projects, a slideshow maybe, 
that is not a part of my main video. Now you can see the project overview window. We now have a main page and a submenu page. You can make as many submenu pages and sub submenu pages as you dare to do. You can make this as complicated as you want. As long as your uh, your confident your viewer can navigate through it, uh, very exciting. But so here now we have a basic structure here with a basic menu and and a couple of links to our media. We can preview that, you know, again and see how it looks. And then of course if we click on any of these, it launches the video itself. So there's our basic menu, and that's it for part one. But now come back and be sure to check out part two of our basic training in DVD Architect Studio. We'll show you now how to customize that menu page and to make it a little more interesting than just a blue background with yellow text on it. So come back for part two. Thanks for joining me for part one of this basic training in DVD Architect Studio.